Hi, my name is Maud Hickey and I'm an associate professor here in music education at Northwestern in the Beeman School of Music. And I'm pleased to be giving this little talk today. And I want to raise a question. What if we taught visual art like we teach some music in schools? Imagine a scenario where your fifth grade beginning art students come to your class and they have their paintbrushes in a case and they First thing you do is you teach them how to open the paintbrush case properly. You open it, close it, make sure it doesn't fall out. And of course, some of your students rent their paintbrush and some own really fancy paintbrushes because they've got more money. And perhaps in the first week you teach them that one is red and two is blue and three is green. And you ask them to memorize that. And of course you teach them how to hold the paintbrush. And for the first exhibition you might perform this piece where the students have to paint by number. Remember, one is red, two is blue, three is green, and stay in the lines. And this is your first visual art exhibition and everybody looks the same. And maybe by eighth grade, the, the visuals get a little more complicated. As you can see, there are more numbers to memorize. The design is a little more tricky, but still everybody has to paint by number and everybody must stay in the lines. And by now, maybe some of the, the students quit and they dropped out of visual art because they just didn't want to paint by number. They didn't want to stay in the lines. And they got together with their friends and now they paint in their garages and they do some really cool, really cool murals. So then we get into the high school visual art and now it's very important that we teach our students to replicate the masters. And you know, so they're still painting by number, staying in the lines. We've lost some of the students along the way but replicate the masters. And of course, we want to be pretty cool and pretty hip in our high school program, so we do some Jackson Pollock. Um, paint by number, stay in the lines. And of course, uh, one of the requirements for the visual art class is that we also paint the logo on the basketball field and the football field as well. Pretty ridiculous to imagine that scenario, right, for a visual art class. Um, but in many ways, sometimes that's how we approach our music classes in, in, in our schools. And sometimes because of that, I think of all the arts classes we offer in schools, our music, class is, our music classes are often the, the, the least creative, if you will. The emphasis on, is on painting by numbers and staying in the lines. So for this very short presentation, I want to urge you to consider how we might teach music education differently than maybe you've been taught. Um, that is infusing more creative thinking throughout the curriculum, um, thinking about music composition, improvisation, allowing children to choose their own numbers and to paint outside the lines, if you will. Something to think about in your own education as, you, as you've come through um, school music. Um, have you ever had a music teacher who asked you to be creative in school music? Have you ever had a music teacher who's asked you to compose? Have you ever had a music teacher who's asked you to improvise? And if your question is yes, I say great. If, you're, if, you, if your answer is yes, I say great. Um, if your answer is no, you know, this is something to think about. Why is that? I think the reason we, we struggle with more creative activities in our school music programs is because we have some myths about what composition, improvisation is, and we have definitions that I think get in the way. And I want to share some definitions that I think might make it easier for all of us to imagine doing composition, improvisation, more creative thinking in our classrooms. The first is creative thinking. Um, it's, it's not a mystery. I mean, creative thinking simply is just the ability to create something new. Everybody can do that. Music. Music is sound and silence, intentionally organized to be expressive doesn't have to be notated, and the sounds don't have to be coming from an orchestra necessarily. We can use found sounds, right, to make music. Composition is just combining sounds and silence with the intent to replicate. And improvisation is music made extemporaneously without intent or desire to replicate. So if we think about those four definitions, I hope um, that we can say, well, creative thinking, improvisation, composition is not that hard. Anybody can do it. It doesn't seem so difficult. So how do we start and how do we do this? Where do we begin as uh, future music teachers? And I say start now. Improvise. 
Next time you go into your practice room to practice your instrument or your voice for your lesson, spend five minutes making stuff up. Just improvise five minutes a day. And I'm not talking about jazz improvisation with chords, etc. Just, just make stuff up on the spot. Try composing. If you're improvising, you're doodling around on your instrument, you're getting into it and you play something you like, write it down. Play it again. Share it with a friend. You're composing. And then observe. Observe your classes. Observe your music classes. Observe teachers in schools with these questions in mind. How could we possibly think more creatively or turn a lesson into something that would be more creative for students? Question. Think. And then finally, teach it. I really, really encourage you, if you are working with young children, especially beginning lessons of some sort, um, I encourage you and I dare you to ask the child to compose. So if they you just taught them three notes on their clarinet, ask them to go home and compose a piece with those three notes. And I can 99.9% .9 guarantee you the child will do that. They'll come back, they will have practiced it more than they do anything else in their books, and they'll be excited about it. And so really um, take that first step and ask a, one of your students to compose. I want to share some resources with you next because I think that also has gotten in our way in music education. There really haven't been, there haven't been resources for teachers to begin thinking about how to get creative thinking and composition and improvisation in our school classrooms, and now there are. The first two, though, um, are old, but they're tried and true, and they're by John Painter, and you can find these used for cheap on Amazon. I don't know if you want that on the tape. Um, by John Painter. One is Sound and Silence, and the other is Sound and Structure, and they're full of really wonderful composition improvisation exercises. Brand new and equally good uh, is a book by John Stevens called Search and Reflect full of really fun improvisation games not related to jazz but to kind of loosen up and get thinking more creatively. And then Jeffrey Agrell um, wrote a book called Improvisation Games for Classical Musicians and it's huge, yeah, the it's a big book full of really great exercises for classical musicians and he's followed with several other books for solo musicians, for duet musicians, for chamber musicians. And, you know, if you're in a chamber group, get one of these books and start improvising because they're full of really good ideas. For music teacher educators, uh, Michelle Kashub and Jan Smith have worked together to create a book, um, Composing Our Future, ideas for those who are going to be music teachers, how they can infuse composition and improvisation in the classroom. And then Minds on Music, full of ideas for composing. And then um, a recent publication that I did in... Um, uh, I would recommend if you're looking for ideas because it's, it's full of practical ideas for how to get composition, improvisation into your classroom, whether it's a choir or a band or an orchestra or first grade children. And so we now have resources out there to help us as music teachers um, help children compose. So to end this, I want to turn the question around. What if we taught music like we teach visual art in our schools? What would that look like? What if we allowed children to paint by numbers other than what we dictate and to be able to draw outside the lines. Giving them freedom to do some composition, improvisation in the music activities as a way to enrich that side of their brain. So I urge you to think about these ideas, give it a try, and um, thank you for listening. <laughs>